It's been so long since I've seen you. Comics and coffee. It's so nice to look <laughs> outside and see sunshine. Uh, this is like our, one of our favorite shows to do now because we get to mix it up and be upstairs and see the sunlight. Don't freak out when you look in the chat room. We're so short-staffed. Indy. Uh. Un capello. What did I say? Oh, I forgot. Hold on. Un capello nello gelato fragola. A hair in strawberry ice cream. That's what it said in English. So I was like, whatever I'm saying, even if the grammar isn't completely correct, that meaning went through Google Translate, which means it has a high probability of being understood by uh, somebody who understands Italian. Um, Hello okay, there. I have no way of knowing if this works because I said we are understaffed. We literally don't have anybody who can. We monitor. have no one downstairs who can <laughs> check on this, so let us know. Oh, it's working! Yay! Great, great. Yay. I had to refresh. I, well, I had to like close OBS and reopen it. Unplug we have it, unplug it, we plug have it the most in. problems with ob OBS upstairs. Son of a bitch! That's what makes it comics coffee. Son using, of a bitch! We're using a different computer, and what's funny is we've actually gone through two different computers, yeah. and the same problem exists. So it's got to be, it's got to be a piece of hardware that we use. Maybe it's just that like, stayed during yeah. the whole because we don't have this problem with OBS downstairs. Mm -hmm. It's only this setup where that weird audio problem happens, and we're now on a different computer than we used to have, so it's got to be a piece of hardware yeah. from the that we used on both, which I believe has got to be that H or the uh, the audio card. Ah, oh, whatever. Fucking hey, man, we have a new T-shirt. Yeah, we do. I want to. I want to keep we, my spirits up today. I, 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 Fucking OBS. You no, know we need. We need a. We need a shirt for Zach that says "Tech Exhausted." Tech Exhausted. I am Tech Exhausted. <laughs> I am tech exhausted. I'm all making week. shirts all fucking week. We're gonna get I, <laughs> IMAX <laughs> and climax. Tech exhausted. Tech exhausted. It's gonna be great. Tech exhausted. Great. I need a tech exhausted shirt. I am always tech exhausted, <laughs> especially especially these last couple of weeks. I Hello know. and welcome everyone to Comics and Coffee. We are live on YouTube. And we are live on Twitch. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, all of you joining us on Twitch and the three people that decided to show up on YouTube because they got notifications. <laughs> Out of our 100,000 subscribers, the, the 14 of you that got notifications right. showed up. So thank you for that. We and really J And Jay Pistol, who's in there, uh, dropping all those <laughs> Streamlabs <laughs> links. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Drop those links. Drop uh, those links. But yeah. So we have a brand new t-shirt uh, for Camp Social Distance. It's now available. Uh, in the link uh, mm -hmm. in the chat mm -hmm. room, both chat rooms, I'm sure the mods can sl smack or toss a link into the Twitch chat as well. Uh, it's a limited edition t-shirt that we're doing for camp social distance, so get it while it's hot. Yeah. Hot, hot. The thing I hate the most about this tech, tech hot, tech exhausted, I can't even say the fucking Exhaustion. The thing I hate the most about all this stuff is we have, because YouTube's a little bit more evergreen yeah. and people will like tune into these videos later and everything and be like, these two guys can't even run their own thing right. I'm like, my you God. have no idea. <laughs> my God. You have no idea. You know what I've actually We roll right into this after two other live shows yeah. with no crew. Wow. Well, I was actually thinking about this and I, I want to talk about this internally. Okay, I won't bring it up then. <laughs> I have this idea for something that could be really, really fun, but I think it'd also be kind of tech exhausting. But I think it'd be a nice little insight into how we're doing things. Oh, so you want me to lose my mind? No. Really? No. Oh, you don't? Because he said it would be tech exhausted. No, so no, no. That's the joke. It would be it would be insightful for our audience to see how we're actually running our studio with a three man crew. A three oh yeah, crew. yeah. I think that could be. I yeah. think that could be interesting. Yeah. Well, well I out. mean, for one, I brought my. Uh, this is a remote studio controller right here, except that I can't monitor audio from it, which is a little bit of a problem. Yeah, so yeah. I'm running the entire studio from this tablet right now uh, because we are doing things a little weird. We're mm -hmm. picking up a signal right now from OBS, and that's being RTMP outputted down to our studio downstairs to our server, and, and then it goes out to you all s so we can split the stream to two different places. But yeah, and you for know. some reason it's delayed by like three minutes on YouTube, but not on not Twitch. Not on Twitch. <laughs> it's a YouTube thing. Whatever. I ain't, I ain't Whatever. It is what it is. Uh, so we are here today to talk about comic books. Comic books. Comic books. Uh, and how they're going away. Oh, God, I hope no. Not. Oh, God. Adam, <laughs> why ah, did you? Ah, Adam. Ah, high spirits. Ah, high spirits. Ah, ah. <laughs> 
But I guess we should just start right off the bat and talk about that. Yeah. It's new comic book day, and most likely you had to pick up your comic books digitally. Mm -hmm. If you did happen to go to a comic book store, you live in one of the cities that is not on complete lockdown, and you're able to pick some up, or you pick them up on the curb, outside, however your local comic book shop is doing it, thank you. You're helping keep the comic book industry alive. You are very needed right now, because uh, people are in collective freak-out mode about how they're going to keep the comic book industry alive through all this. Yeah. Comic books are already a very small industry. Yeah. And I feel like it's uh, just like kind of the content we make. Um, it It is like very easily one of the first things that you cut back on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like comic books are not as uh, – they're a luxury in a way. Sure. A fine wine. Malika says the opposite, but I disagree with her all the time. Uh, yeah. You call them lowbrow content. Uh, no, they are the mass market. Okay, but anyway, uh, it's a. Uh, I, I consider them because it's so extra. It's one of the first things that gets cut from your budget, and um, that really bums me out. Because in times like this, I feel like comic books are really going to be hurting. So for all the people that are picking up these comic books, thank you. That's rad. But the ones you're picking up now, you might not. I, did we learn how quickly Diamond's going to stop shipping? Uh, they have so everything that's currently in their like fulfillment order that they've that they've uh, been obligated to, obligated to ship out. I don't know to what certain time period, but everything that's been currently already fulfilled and is like packed up and ready to go for mm -hmm. however long will all be pushed out. Once all that inventory, that remaining inventory, has all been pushed out, they're done for the time being. Ooh. So I have no clue how far ahead or how behind or whatever, but yeah. from whatever's in, whatever they have in their inventory now. That will go out, and that'll be kind of it until the foreseeable future. So this is all the things being shipped out by Diamond Publishing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, they're taking those orders in from Marvel, DC, Image, mm -hmm. Valiant, uh, I believe Aftershock, um, IDW, Boom, yeah. all of those. They're not going to be shipping any books because Diamond is shutting down. And Dinesh explained it in our interview yesterday. If you really think about it, it's the safest thing to do because a comic book's going through like four or five hands before it gets shipped out. Yeah. And it's just not a very safe thing to do that could spread things. Yeah, exactly. Right now, yeah, not the safest way to go about it. So, I mean, I, I guess based on that conversation, you know, our hope was that, well, even though physical comic books will not be around for the time being, this is a perfect opportunity for people who have wanted to maybe jump into digital to really like understand this whole sort of like workflow of how mm -hmm. of how this whole thing works. Because for me, up until last year, comicsology and all that kind of stuff was kind of new for me. I knew it because I worked at DC, but I didn't really inter in interact with the apps the way I do now. And it's really grown on me a lot, and I love it. But I still am going too long for the physical comics. It's actually not gone forever. It's interesting. Dinesh and I were talking about this yesterday before the interview started mm -hmm. about comicsology and how it's kind of weird how uh, comicsology hasn't been capitalizing on this more. Mm -hmm. And that comicsology could really be pushing right now to try to save the comic book industry and putting out more ad space, marketing more, and trying to reach out to influencers and things like that. But it doesn't seem to be any communication or anything yeah. that they're doing internally to try to like really Yo, get CX, on top of this stuff. Yo, CX, what's up? What's up? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people could yeah. be jumping over to that platform and uh, checking out comic books that way when they can't make it to their shop. And mm. I would prefer that over people just not picking up books at all. Right. Right. And uh, we don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know. Diamond did not put a date on it. As far as I know, no. So, uh, I believe until they think it's safe. Yeah. Until they think it's safe, we are not going to be having any more printed and shipped comics. Yeah, comic distributors. Is it Okay, so that just says redundancies. March 25th. Um So this is about their this is about their employees. Okay. Oof. So, a little bit of an updated piece of information, uh -huh. but Let's see this. I'm pretty sure it did not. Um, Polygon has confirmed that Diamond Collecting Common Distributor maintains a near mob. Is instructing printers to stop sending the company new books to ship until further notice. So no Okay, date. so they probably got these books for this week. I doubt many will come out next week. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be weird. Next week's going to be a really weird new comic book day. Because yeah, the turnaround for comics is pretty tight. It's pretty tight. Well, like Dinesh was saying yesterday, they could give them things on a Friday. Mm-hmm. 
to be, you know, printed over the weekend yeah. and then shipped to the stores by Tuesday night yeah. and then put in your hand on a yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. So yeah. really quick turnaround. Who uh now that being said, if there are any comic books that are made by local publishers in your area, I know there are some local publishers here in Los Angeles and in New York. Uh, your comic book store might know about some local people. It could be a good time for you to support local indie comic creators mm -hmm. uh, that are hitting your local store. Uh, you'd have to call your local store, though. I think you would just have to call them um, and, and talk to them and ask them if they have anything local that you could support and, uh, and see if there's any neat books you could discover that way. I know I've discovered some really neat books in L.A., um, there's a couple secret headquarters in Silver Lake is one of my favorite spots. They've got a ton of local self-published books oh, wow. uh, that are really neat. Some really great stuff in there. Nice. Oh, uh, boy. says maybe this will drive al alternates to Diamond to develop. I mean, uh, it's tough because I feel like right now, you know, because of because manufacturing a comic book, a physical comic book requires so much mm -hmm. interaction. Um, and, you know, like Dinesh was saying yesterday, it's all about changing hands and changing hands and changing hands. Yeah. And they're really trying to minimize that. So I don't know if, if, if some altern alternative company. Somebody can come up with a completely human free yeah. printing process, yeah. but I don't think I don't they know. can. I don't know how that would work. Yeah, I don't I know think how that really, would work. really, really tough. So, yeah, we'll see how this, how this shakes out. But, you know, I would be very bummed if I couldn't, you know, go into a comic book shop. And, e you know, I, I am somewhat of a window shopper sometimes when it com comes to comic book shops. If I go to a shop, I'm usually it's I'm not usually buying single issues. Mm -hmm. I'm buying a book, a trade, okay. or you know some sort of compendium or some collection of stories. Um, but even so, you know, like I, I still want that opportunity to be able to pick up. You know, we've done in the past where we've gone to a comic book shop and we picked up books, and you know you're just standing there, you get to look through it, and you're like, oh, you know what, this looks great. I love the art. You discover something that you probably wouldn't have picked up before. I love that idea of just discovery because with with the digital stuff. You have previews, but I feel like it's just a different experience. It's mm -hmm. just a different experience for me. I like to be able to pick it up and see how it looks and feels and get an idea for it. And then I'm like, yeah, you know what? I am going to buy this. So I don't want that to go away. And obviously, they're just saying it's until further notice. It's not yeah. forever. I'm a big fan of Comixology. I love your brick and mortar uh, comic book stores. I think that they should be supported. Yeah. Um, I would love, and I should have asked Dinesh this yesterday, like what's the percentage that you get from selling a comic book on Comixology versus mm. going through the whole printing process, getting it in stores and, yeah. and you know, like what do the creators get back at the end mm -hmm. of it? And you know, does Comixology already as a service and others like it become more valuable just that there's more profit margin for right. the creators? Um, but it's a shame because I feel like brick and mortar stores, when it comes to something as niche as comic books, are kind of needed to tell mm -hmm. people what to buy, yeah. what to add to their pool. Mm -hmm. And already those are dropping like flies, you know? Yeah, I remember just from my experience of, of working uh, very briefly at DC, you know, it, I imagine that the profits, the, the profit variance must be, I don't know about huge, but there definitely is one. Because I, I remember when we were working on stuff and converting things to comicsology, you literally just like sent them something. Mm -hmm. And then they would like add it to their system, and that's it. There's no like, there's not nothing else. There's nothing else. No other process. You know, you're just making sure you're QCing everything, and once it's good to go, it's just good to go. So yeah, I, yeah, I would be curious to know yeah. uh, if there are any comic book creators out there watching. Uh, I would, I would love, I would love to, uh, I would love to know because yeah. often you can get cheaper runs of books, things like that on Comicsology. So I, there's got to be a better profit yeah. margin for the creator. And I would say too, you know, even though we're not going to we may not be getting f new physical stuff for the time being, the comic book library is so huge. There's so much that if you have a comic book shop near you that is still open and 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 uh, you know, and if they have some sort of like mm -hmm. System worked out where you can go pick up stuff. Like, definitely get older things, too. Like, there's a I lot of great stuff out there. in my life, I've read more comics than watch movies. Mm -hmm. And I every six months kind of go through this phase where I'm like, well, you know, I feel like I've read everything. There's probably no more new books out there for me to discover. And then someone will tag me on a post or something mm -hmm. and be like, have you checked this book out? It's collected and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no. <I am> now. <laughs> and then I'll pick it up. And a lot yeah. of it's on Comixology. And mm -hmm. I find myself often diving deep through creator catalogs yeah. uh, on Comixology. Or I can like click on somebody's name and then realize, wait, I didn't know they worked on this book. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got to read that now. You yeah. know, I got to check it out. And uh, there's a lot out there. There's mm -hmm. so much. I'm constantly being reminded that, oh, you know, there's more out there. I run into this problem now where I've read so much, um, I forget a lot. 
Mm. Like I'll forget that I've even read stuff Mm -hmm. and I often do it before bed too. So that's not probably good, but I'll forget. And then I'll pick up a book in the store and I'll get five pages in. I'll be like, wait a minute. (laughs) Why does it sound so familiar? I already read this. (laughs) I just completely forgot. But maybe that's just me getting old too. That could just be my brain deteriorating at a uh, accelerating rate. Uh, Yeah. You know, it's very possible. That could be it. That could be it. (laughs) Old age. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. But today, Okay, uh, lots of fun books came out mm-hmm. today, uh, lots of good stuff. I personally, though, decided right at the beginning of the day, shit, I'm behind on X-Men, I'm going to catch up on X-Men. So I did. And I know that we're weeks, hell, probably even a month and a half behind. X-Men number seven. Mm. Mm. That is my sauce. <laughs> that is some. That is my sauce right there. <laughs> Dribble that on everything. Uh, X Men number seven by Jonathan Hickman uh, with Art by you. Climax and climax, I guess. <laughs> oh shit! It's the one with Apocalypse on the cover with the sword. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole issue is a conversation between Scott Summers and Nightcrawler for the most part. There's a little bit with Wolverine at the beginning, and you find out that on Krakoa they're having this thing called the Crucible. And that, you know, when Wanda did her whole No More Mutants thing, Mm -hmm. it's also really funny to see how the the young children, X-Men, were being indoctrinated with this whole, like, Wanda's the devil. (laughs) Dude, she's the pretender. She's the one that took mutants away. She took a million mutants out with a word. Uh, So these little kids are all, like, repeating it, No More Mutants, like they're being told a story by Exodus. And you find out that there's these mutants who used to be mutants, but they're not anymore. So they go through, they ask if they can be a part of the Crucible. It's fucking intense. It's so good because at its heart, it's just an ethics debate between Scott and uh, Nightcrawler about, you know, between Kurt and Scott. Like, is this the right thing to do? Is this okay? I have moral qualms with this. And even, you know, the beginning conversation with uh, Logan and Scott was great, too. Of Like, should we have an opinion on this? And Logan's like, I'm done being the one, like, that has an opinion on this. Like, they chose without us. We're a part of this now. I'm just going along with it. Yeah. You need to talk to a priest, not me, if you want to, uh, you know, like, a- and he's like, I think I will. <laughs> so then he goes and talks <laughs> to Kurt. But it was really good, really well paced. And then just while he's having this conversation in the background, the crucible is happening. Mm-hmm. Like they're having this conversation throughout the crucible. And it's Sam Guthrie's uh, sister, who used to be a mutant, uh, Cannonball's sister. I can't remember her name. Uh, Magnolia? Man, uh, I can't remember it right now. But... She wants to go through the crucible, and it's fucking intense because Apocalypse is basically in an arena with her, and he's like, "You're not a mutant. You're a human now. You're not worth being a mutant." And he's got he's like basically testing her, and mm-hmm. she's fighting him to the death. And he's just like, "Just give up. Accept it. You're a weak human." And she's like, "No, never." And <laughs> it's just like Apocalypse beating the shit out of her while all these other mutants watch. watch. And it's like, holy fuck. Yeah. <laughs> It was intense. Those are those two pages that you had me look at, right? Well, because, like, X-Men are scary Uh, now, bro. There's these two great pages where he finally kills her, and then the next page is, like, we know. It's, like, the idea is when they're reborn from the five, they're reborn with their mutant abilities again. Yeah. But as Scott and Kurt talk about in the book, if a million mutants just come together at once, uh, that's going to be a problem Mm -hmm. for the council. So they created the Crucible. You have to kind of, like, apply to be a part of it, to be killed by Apocalypse. It's fucking okay. wild. As an okay. X Men fan, I'm just like, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> it's like Midsummer meets X Men. It's Megalo Blaze fucking <laughs> crazy. And Storm like being like, awaken my child yeah. as she crawls out of the uh, out of the gold ball. Yeah, <laughs> X Men's fucking nuts it's right nuts, now. Man. I mean, j- all I needed was those two pages to see one how intense it is, two how terrifying, and three how just like different it is yeah like and it makes it it's all the x-men all the names i'm using you know it's all these these are the x-men this is an x-men book but it's crazy yeah it's fucking crazy and the book ends with kurt being like i think it's time for me to start a mutant religion oh my god fuck shit this is getting out of hand fuck this is getting crazy man Jesus. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just caught up on X-Men today. I didn't get a chance to read any other books because once I read X-Men 7, I was like, no, nah, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. I'm going to keep going. This is know. amazing. Making my way through it. Making my way downtown. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I fucking love it. It makes me so excited to be an X-Men fan right now. Yeah. Um, outside of that, though, we also had Hellions number one came out, mm-hmm. 
which is uh, one of the new X books, and also Giant Size X Men Nightcrawler. Yeah, uh, uns Kurt so Wagner. So knowing now that at the end of seventy said he's going to start a mutant religion, I wonder if that's what, if this, that's is what this is about. Like if they end up uh, diving into that yeah. at all. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Starting uns religion, yeah. Here I come. Oh, Westchester. Oh, Westchester. Kurt Wagner. Yeah, Kurt Wagner. Look at, uh, look at good my stuff. Good stuff. Shoulders. So I'm excited to read these later. Yeah. And, uh, I was a little bummed. I really out. wanted to try to get into uh, Exo Manowar number mm. one, and uh, we, just, we just we had an hour. It yeah, just I know. Was not we only possible. had one hour, <laughs> and that included like getting some. We had to like set up head, headsets, and it, yeah, you don't need to know all that shit. But yeah. it was impossible to read uh, a lot today. Um, but you know, there was one thing that I definitely did want to check out that I did get to read that I was uh, pretty that you're super for. pumped about is a Blade Runner. Uh, you know, I think I'm missing an issue because uh, there's a little bit of context that I'm missing. Okay. I think I, I think I missed uh, issue six. I think five was kind of the start of like the next volume or whatever. Okay. Um, so I didn't. I, I so I'm missing a little bit. So it was good. It was good. It's definitely a very slower paced episode. Uh, you have Ash, who is the uh, the Blade Runner, who is like on the hunt for this child, and it's a it's a very slow moving story. It's probably like one of the most like blade runner stories in terms of its pacing like it's pretty okay. slow moving but it, it it's like a really fun uh cat and mouse game and uh, our character is now in a, in a new part of the world uh, that she's unfamiliar with so she's a little bit of a fish out of water and she's going with this other character and they're just looking for this kid that's been kidnapped and is with these replicant i, I don't know if the replicant assassins um because again, I'm missing some context, but there's some there's some good dialogue, but it's definitely slower paced, and uh, you know it's it's baby steps, it's baby steps. But I've really liked this Blade Runner series quite a bit. Uh, the first four issues Yo, were very strong. Yo, the colorist on this book is solid. Yeah, yeah. And there's also a lot of time jumping, so we're going back certain days, certain weeks, going to the future. Um, so. I definitely do need to go back and read issue six to sort of see what's happened because if you miss the in between, I, I think it's a little, it's a little, feels a little disjointed. But I am liking it. And they do a d good job depicting a lot of the action. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a fun read for sure. And it's just like it's a little bit more of that universe that I really do enjoy being in. Nice. I'd actually really like to go back and we we've, we've got Blade Runner and, and Twenty Forty Nine on on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I mean, we own we own them anyway, but. You know, it'd be fun to maybe do like a watch along, but dude, twenty forty nine, I love so much. Yeah, I, I like that movie more every time I watch yeah, it. Yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah, I wanted to check out Exo Man of War number one as well. Another relaunch here. Um, you know, I was a really, really big fan of Matt Kent's run. Mm -hmm. It took Exo Man of War to a crazy, totally different place. Yeah, and it was really, really fun. I really wanted to check out X Men Fantastic Four number three. I thought number two was really strong. So mm -hmm. I'll be checking that out later today. But did you get a chance to check out Transformers and Terminator? Oh, you goddamn right I did. Oh, oh shit. Shit, man. This was great. This cover is so good. Have you okay. seen the variants? The variants are at the end. Okay. They are dope as shit. This looks so fucking yeah. crazy. So what? How do you even mix a Transformer and a Terminator? That, that, that doesn't even make sense. What? What is this book? Oh, man. It's so Okay, so it very much... I did not know that in the opening of this of this issue, I didn't realize that this was supposed to be Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator. I thought maybe this was a resistance fighter, maybe a Kyle Reese type of character, um, but it's not. It's a it's a T eight hundred. This is a T eight hundred. This right is here. a T eight hundred right here, and um, you basically get a little bit of insight as to like there's a little bit of narration. It just kind of explains to you that the machines have been trying to take over and they're trying to win the war. You find out though that it is the Decepticons, and it is not. Skynet, <laughs> which is pretty fucking rad. Skynet Omega Base, last stronghold of the Resistance. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so, wait, wait, wait. Skynet is the Resistance. Skynet that's, Omega Base, that's, last stronghold. That's of what the it resistance. feels like they're sort of like placing it as. Um, and it's interesting too because the T eight hundred has a. Wait, so 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 it's like the Skynet takes over. Mm -hmm. But then the Decepticons come, and yeah. now it's like Skynet has to protect the Earth. From is that what it is? That's the general concept. So they have to. So they have to send the T eight hundred back in time. Uh, I think he ends up kind of like missing his um, oh missing God. the time he goes to, and so he basically has to like try to go <clears throat> and destroy the Transformers before this whole war happens. Uh, so he has a running with Sarah Connor. He has to get to Mount Saint Helens. This is insane. It's it's, it's nuts. It's really really fun. In terms of like it being some like very good story, it's not really. What are you expecting? But it's super fun. 
And they have callbacks to great lines from the Terminator movies. Come with me if you want to live. Sarah Connor is obviously there. She's a waitress in this. So it, it plays a little bit with the timeline of Terminator. And uh, it's just such a fun time. And the whole time I'm reading it, once I realize that he is Arnold Schwarzenegger, the whole time, give me your clothes. Come with me if you want to live. I need to get to Mount St. Helens. Come on, get me there quickly. Oh, my God. Yeah, and then you turn the page and he's in his classic 84 outfit and you're like, Oh, okay. I and know that's what this Mount St. Helens? Yeah. Or Mount St. Hillary. Oh, St. Hillary. St. Hillary. Uh, and it's like the first time it's erupted since like the 1800s or something. And then he wait, goes wait, in. Wait, 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 wait. Is yeah. he, he's driving. He's driving this 18-wheeler. You mean Optimus? I mean, come on. It's a red 18-wheeler. There's He's driving Optimus. You can go to the very last page if you want. And you can I mean, I'm just I, everybody knows it's a fucking red 18-wheeler. What I else know. is it going to be? I know. Well. You don't call a book Transformers and Terminator and put him in a red 18-wheeler and then you'll be like, oh, it was just, an, it was just a red 18-wheeler. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, uh, fail. I think it's going to be a, a, a very, I think it's going to be very fun. Be very fun for sure. And to see how does one Terminator, one T-800 destroy you know, all of the Transformers. So it'll be a good time. But these covers are so slick. Though. Oh, my God. I will see you in hell. <laughs> it's, a, it's a wacky, wacky old good time. But you know what? To be honest with you, when it comes to things like this, these types of crossovers, whether it's Ninja Turtles and Batman, Turtles and Power Rangers, Terminator and Transformers, Robocop and Terminator, this is the kind of, like, cheese I want. <laughs> you know, like, I want this very, like, these covers are awesome. Um... This is the kind of stuff that I want. I want it to be fun. I want it to so be very ridiculous. escapist. And I want it to be kind of ridiculous because that's, that's what I'm expecting. And look, if it ends up being a very heartfelt, deep story, you know, in, in future issues, I'm also fine with that. Um, but this was a really fun read. This was a very fast read, but it was very, very fun as well. I, I really liked it a lot. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. That logo in and of itself right, right? there. Let's go back right? to that. This is – I didn't know I wanted de this. De 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 de. <laughs> I didn't even know I wanted this. Yeah, it's a fun book. You got the touch. Oh my god. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you got the power. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What a crazy combo. Yeah. Uh so you checked that out and you checked out uh Blade Runner. Blade Runner. So those are yeah. two you were able to read. Yeah. So there were some more books that came out this week um that look really great. Once in future. I am fully like that. That book's gonna be good. Yeah. Once in future has not disappointed me a single issue. The Immortal Hulk number thirty three is most likely fucking phenomenal mm -hmm. because it has also been absolutely just killing it, just killing it. So mm -hmm. I cannot wait to cannot wait to read a more Immortal Hulk number thirty three. Um, Hellions number one came out. Uh, we got Wild Child on this cover, which is blowing my mind right now. I haven't seen Wild Child since Age of Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. uh, I know he was in something else since Age of Apocalypse, and I can't remember what it was. Uh, I picked up I Can Sell You a Body number three, and I believe that's, yeah, that's where we are. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't have a huge pull list this weekend. Mostly it's because, you know, we're, we're trying to just yeah, be more busy. resourceful, and we're trying to read stuff that we're actually, like, actively going to mm -hmm. read because – you know, our, our time is very limited on Wednesday, so we want to read something. Yeah, I want to. I'm glad I got to read that Transformers Terminator crossover book, and I'm glad I got to read Blade Runner. But I definitely, yeah, like Exo Man War, I'm going to check out. I would actually really like to catch up on Once in Future because it's I know so a lot good. of people in our audience are tweeting at us or in the chat room are saying like, "This book's great. I love this book." So I really want to. I really want to get on it. Absolutely phenomenal. I know I see somebody in the YouTube chat. Dennis yeah. says, "Are you guys going to talk about New Warriors and the new X Men lines from Marvel?" It's literally what we were talking about uh, earlier. So you can go back and. Check out the earlier part of the video. We talked about New Warriors last week mm -hmm. on we the did, show. We did. We, did. we talk about X Men a lot, though. We've been. Uh, yeah. we've I mean, been when keeping really close track of when it. the new run started, we were reading like that was kind of like the main thing we were focusing mm -hmm. on every week, mm -hmm. and we were reading it together and all that sort of stuff. And now it's obviously spiraled off and, and yeah. has a lot of other books. But yeah, it's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big fan. Um, so I feel like with 30 minutes left in the show, do we just want to pick a book to read today? Sure. Uh, what are you guys thinking? I mean, Hellions number one came out. That's mm -hmm. number one, so that'd be a good jumping on point. Um, there's also Exo Man of War number one, which is a good jumping on point. Yeah. I, let's pick between those two. Okay. Uh, let's let the let's let's let the chat vote. Okay. Why not? Okay. I know we can't run polls in the YouTube chat. No. 
Um, so Twitch chat, if you wanted to Damn get you. a vote going, uh, a I poll, wish there was a way. Exo Man of War. I'm sure there's bots we could put in there to do that. Nightbot is in there, but Nightbot has not been like really working. Oh yeah. I gotta fix it. Okay. All right. So get us started in the uh, Twitch chat on a poll: Hellions or Exo Man of War, and we'll let you guys choose. Uh, Hellions looks like it's a number one with the new X Men books, and Exo Man of War number one just dropped today. It's another one of their relaunches, I, and I, I know nothing about it. I know nothing about it. Yeah. I know nothing. 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 All right, poll is open. I feel like Exo Man. Well, I don't want to influence the chat room, but it's it's very much on point with like us watching Bloodshot mm-hmm, mm-hmm. last night. Even though the movie yeah. doesn't technically tie into the greater not uh, at all. Valley universe, <laughs> not at all. Which I will say, uh, last week we read the Plunge number yeah. one on Dude, that was stream. Good, I man. read number two after the stream. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Yeah, number cool. two is a great issue. Cool. It it starts. Number one starts <coughs> off actually pretty slow, and then number two amps the fuck really? up. Really? Yeah. I didn't bring up this book that I read last week. Uh, Go Down? Starship Down. Wait, did I talk about that? I don't think you did. Yeah, so I read that last week, and uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. The book very much starts out as we've made alien contact. We found ancient writings on a wall. Hey, you smart science person, come decipher this. Mm-hmm. And it kind of starts like a very stereotypical alien first contact story. So it wasn't unique enough to hook me. Um, I might give issue two a try possibly yeah. just to sort of see if they kind of bounce back from it. Um, there was some like witty writing and there was some fun character work. But overall, it felt very much like a typical, we found this ancient cave, yeah. ancient writings, ancient ship. I couldn't really get into it, but I'd love to know if anybody in our chat mm-hmm. room ha- mm-hmm. uh, read Starship Down and if they had any other thoughts about so it. So it looks like Exo Manowar is the winner, fourteen okay. to seven, and okay. I even added the two YouTube comments that said Hellions. Oh, no sick! <laughs> that wouldn't that wouldn't add enough to, to yeah. beat out Exo Manowar. Um, so yeah, Exo Manowar still takes the win there, but hardly anyone voted. Y'all gotta get on your uh, you, you gotta get off your butts. There's a lot of you. Get watching. a clickety clacking in the chat room. Get that get that clickety get clack going. And a clacking, y'all. We want Come your on. opinions. When we ask for a vote, we want to know what you feel. <laughs> it's about you. It's about you. So <laughs> get up, about us. Stop sitting on your hands and get the clickety clacks going. The clickety clacking. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna give Exo Manowar a read here. All right, live make on sure the you air. put this on extra large zoom for my uh, blind eyes. Oh, you are so blind. You know what? You are so blind. I'm, I'm, I'm really tired of your shade. So blind. Oh, Dennis Hopeless is the writer on this one. Okay. And Emilio Lazo did the art. This uh, this should, this should, could be good. This could be good. Yeah. yeah. Let's check it out. It's weird, though, that that looks like uh, like a, a bat-related vehicle. I, I was about to say, I'm like, you know oh, is that the bat wing? reflection. I'm like, is that a, is that a fucking <laughs> bat wing? What is, <laughs> what is that all about? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Ark. Of okay. Okay. Page, scene. yeah, you ready? Get in the care. You gotta get in character. Acting. Exo Manowar, a fifth-century Visigoth warrior prince, Eric of Dacia, was abducted and enslaved by aliens known as the Vine. Escaping their control, Eric bonded with unique sentient armor, Shanhara, becoming. X.O. Manowar, the most powerful weapon in the universe. Returning to Earth in modern day, Arik and Shanhara use their incredible capabilities for the good of mankind, but mankind has other intentions. <laughs> I think you've got a good, deep Arik of Dacia. Oh, like, yeah? Yeah, you, you do Arik, and <clears throat> I'll do Shanhara. Okay. Shanhara, you stop talking. Yes, Eric. Oh my God, you never stop talking. <laughs> Next, oh, come on, don't be dumb. I was told my assistance is unnecessary. When the solution is obvious. So, uh, and then we can see here there's an alien talking, and Shanhara is now just translating. Death to the human plague. Death to the armor thief. Vengeance will be, and if there's one thing I know for sure you can handle, it's a half-derelict Zephyr piloted by a war-crazed Vine Fleet survivor. (laughs) Suffering severe PTSD after months of isolation. Well, the silence is unsettling. I've grown accustomed to your voice in my ear. (laughs) Don't you know it? I am not a podcast physicoth. 
I can't read that. Okay, all right. Let me let me zoom in for you. Oh no, it's not. Let me zoom in. here. Here, let me zoom. You're in. my get, partner. Oh uh, my god. Oh my god. You got it. You got it. You got it. All right, zoom in. Zoom in. Here, let me okay. let me get okay. you. Okay, there. Blind mode. You're my partner. It is not my job to keep you amused. I'm saying I value your guidance. Wow. Okay, that's some teamwork there. Yeah. Do you? Yes, of course. Is that me still? Yep. I'm a 5th century warrior in a magic suit of armor. You know it isn't magic, Arik. And you are my trusted advisor, a wellspring of knowledge, human and alien. Go on. <laughs> <It's fucking laughs> doing the uh, zoom in mode instead of panel to panel stuff. I'd be blind without your light. I see. So you do want my assistance. Obviously. Well then, and the future... Not to park the 900-ton alien spacecraft in the middle of the freeway during rush hour. I just saved the city from certain doom. Some people would rather die than sit in traffic. A disastrous morning for commuters after the city's super-powered so-called hero decided to strand a flying saucer on the turnpike. The spaceship, a wreck from last year's Vine invasion, which appears to have fallen out of orbit, was unmanned and the commuters involved were thankfully uninjured. Faring much better than the George Washington Bridge, which according to city engineer estimates could be out of commission for the next six months. Patrons of the network Dark Roast got a cool, close encounter with their morning coffee when a flaming alien crashed through their front windows. Firefighters were able to snuff the ensuing blaze and haul off what was left of the corpse. But the shop will remain closed the remainder of the week for cleaning and repairs. Goodness, that's a grisly scene. Is this Exo Manowar? No, this is oh, okay. a different crazy person. Save the day. Piss off the whole world. Yeah, there you go. Classic Exo. I got him! I got him! Calm down, we all got him. Bring it on, man! The Tsar Yard! Sean Hara? Basketball is a team sport in which two teams, most commonly of five players each, compete with the primary objective of shooting a basketball through the defender's hoop. It was created in 1891 by a mustachioed man with a peach basket. Uh, a peach basket? and popularized globally, globally 100 years later by a magician, a bird, and a man named <laughs> Michael. <laughs> oh, my God. What is it I'm supposed to do? Yo, pass or shoot! There's something called the pick and roll, but I believe that requires help from a teammate. Oh, here, just throw the ball up at the backboard, and it should go into the hoop. Done! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Bing! Holy! What was that? <laughs> Big dude trying to pop the damn ball! <laughs> It did not go into the hoop. No. The bing, physics are dubious. Bing, bing, bing. Desmond, I told you I wanted that homework finished first. It totally is, Mom. I, I, I'm going to do all my reading before bed. Good deal. That means you've got plenty of time to help me with dinner. Now wave bye-bye to everybody and take these groceries upstairs. Oh, Mom, I, I can't. It's my basketball they're playing with. Not anymore it's not. Miss Harris don't even play. Game over. Thank the gods. How many times do I have to tell you, weirdo? Nobody wants you here. Nobody asked for you. We don't need you. And if you don't keep yourself clear or these children uh, clear of these children, I will eradicate the tip of these boots just to kick your bulletproof butt out. She'll do what to her boots? It's a comic book reference. During the Cold War, fictional heroes and villains often gained their powers by way of nuclear explosions of vats of acid. Uh, that, that's ridiculous. Your stubbornness is ridiculous. No one trusts you here, Arik. From their perspective, you are a large man with terrifying abilities who wanders the streets in those clothes muttering to himself when he's not smashing up buildings and starting fires on the nightly news. I, I, I like my clothes. Worn cotton. It, it breathes. You also like helping people which would be much easier if you tried fitting in. Mm. Get yourself some nice clothes, a suit maybe, build a life for yourself, a home, with your intact, four intact walls. Ha! I prefer sleeping under the stars, and you're the only suit I need, Shanhara. While I appreciate that odd sentiment, you seem to be missing my point. This world, this era, it runs on commerce. You need money, Arik. I'm a prince. I need nothing. You do need food, and even that isn't free. Isn't it? Hell yeah, there he goes again! Motherfucker flies! <laughs> Canada. Oh, Canada. The nudity seems excessive, Eric. Shh. Tender voices. 
Oh, yeah, he's missing his left hand, by the way. (laughs) Oh, fuck. (laughs) Well, is he missing anything else? (laughs) No, I think that's it. (laughs) Later. No need to lurk in the shadows uh, back there, friend. Come and join me. You sure? It's food. It's free, and there's too much just for me. Yes, yes, point taken. Just making nice with the neighbors like you wanted. Never mind that. I'm reading something strange out over the bay. Big time power surge. Hot and fast. Mm. Looks like some kind of missile or rocket. Well then, I'm fed. Help yourselves, friends. I'm off to wrestle a rocket. You do you, blue man. (laughs) Motherfucker flying. (laughs) There. What is it? Looks like a ballistic missile, but I find no record of that specific design. There doesn't appear to be an explosive warhead. Uh, Can I destroy it? Yes, but not Uh, over the city. Obviously. No more obvious than that last five times. Sorry. Oh, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Our little publicity son seems to have hit a bit of a superhero snag. Looks like I might have some more building to do. Mr. Whitaker, uh, Troy, can we get a comment on this attack? Uh, uh, Mr. Whitaker. Billionaire teach mogul Troy Whitaker attempted to launch his much-rumored commercial space program this evening only to have his Troy Toy 6 rocket <laughs> Troy Toy 6 rocket ripped out of the sky by Exo Man of War. Mm. This is just the latest in a string of similar attacks perpetuated by the New York's flying vigilante. Keep it tuned right here to our live coverage as this story unfolds. News Chopper 5 is on the scene following the missing rocket. What can you tell us, Gary? Uh, Exo Man of War appears to be taking the rocket out over the bay, Elaine, or the rocket is taking him. At the moment, it's not clear which. We'll keep after him. That should be far enough. I'm no longer reading any people down below. Uh, yeah, uh, Oops. Well, uh, actually, I stand corrected. Oh, man, oh, man, they're still they're still coming. W- w- what did you do? Get over immediately. I didn't do anything. I was just driving. Look out! <laughs> what? What the, what the? What was that? The, the cops, they hit it. Go, go, go. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. I'm... No. You are staying. Stay down on the ground right now. <laughs> oh, I think it's supposed to go over that way. Nope. Never mind. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're coming, man. We're, we're sorry. Apology <laughs> accepted. Jeez, throw his car away. <laughs> I set everybody down. What the hell did you do that for? That's my mom's car, man. Shut up and get on the ground, Des. Oh, no. Desmond? I- I'm afraid there's been a misunderstanding. You, back off right now, superhero. Th- these are not fleeing not criminals. Not another step. <laughs> They are frightened children. Tread carefully here, Eric. This will not look good. Remove your weapons. At which point he assaulted the officers, allowing the as yet unnamed suspects to escape on foot. Good God. <gasps> uh, hey, Mom. Desmond! I'm going to go do my homework. You little motherfucker. <laughs> I uh, threw your car into the bay. Um, uh, apologies, ma'am. <laughs> Why would you open with that? I, I will fix this. It, it wasn't his fault. Uh, they're going to say it was, but we messed up, bit of me. We never should have run. Big dude came down and it, it could have been so much worse. Hush, Desmond. I want to help people. I, I'm trying to help people, but, but sometimes sometimes my, my instincts get the better of me. Thank you. Thank me. Say you're welcome. Uh, you're, you're welcome. You saved my boy's life tonight. That's what matters. That's the only thing. I don't care about the news. I don't care about the car. You're one of us now. We have a spare room in the back. You'll be staying up with us from now on. That took a turn. Th- that's not, <laughs> not, not necessary. Yeah, d- don't argue. Anything she says while she's walking away, already a done deal. Later. What, what does your internet say I should do? Buy a new car. Uh, hilarious. Oh, right. You're princely fortune is back in the 14th century. In that case, you can start by taking everything apart, drain the gas tank and the fuel lines, dry out the test the electrical systems, rebuild the engine, remove any rust, replace any filters and gaskets. I, 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 I don't know what any of that ah, means. Modern technology, so complicated, so wasteful, so fragile, when a horse gets wet, you tie it up in the damn sun! Ah! <laughs> Apologies. I, um, 
little 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 hammer slipped. Yeah, this is a wrench. Right, of of course. Oof, got yourself a project. So it would seem. My dad owned a little auto shop when I was a kid. When something like this came in, he'd grab the owner by the shoulder and offer to tow it to the junkyard free of charge. Yeah, well. <sighs> then once he got the salvage title for peanuts, the two of us would spend the next few months bringing it back from the dead. You you can fix this? I can give it a go. That would be incredible. Figure out you want anyway with that dear Eric. Trouble. Breaking news. We're getting reports from the Ukraine of a bombing at the KV Kiev Borispil International Airport. Hundreds presumed dead and countless thousands injured. And now shots fired in nearby city of gunmen armed with machine guns. Civil unrest in the area is at an all-time high as Russians reported insurgents have engaged in increasingly violent protests. Seems like I'm needed in the Ukraine. Go on then. Do your superhero thing. I've got this little hammer. I can take it from here. According to the internet, Russia is trying to destabilize the Ukrainian government by backing various insurgent groups. Don't need to hear about the politics. Just point me in the direction of the murderers. Murder is subjective in war. Who blew up the airport? We don't know yet. Okay then. <laughs> well, we'll disarm everyone. And sort it out after. Incoming. Another stinger? Bigger. Bigger? Much <laughs> bigger. Simmer down now, Visigoth. <laughs> Visigoth? The war's over. You lose. Aw, oh, shit. To be continued. To be continued. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so that was, was uh, issue fun. one of Exo issue Manor. Issue two on sale April 29th. Uh, I will say, very, like, huge flip for me. Mm -hmm. Based off the last series, yeah. which is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, every new creative team is going to have a different spin on it. Um, it's just like such a turn from yeah. what I'm used to seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Kent's run, you know, Exo Manowar was out in space alone. He'd kind of like removed himself from the Earth. Oh, okay. And uh, had made a life with uh, a woman on a planet, and then a galactic war starts, and he gets himself involved, and mm. he has to kind of regain the trust of uh, Shanhara. So, it, very different. Uh, the last time we really saw Eric doing stories on Earth, he was living in Nebraska okay. with his uh, other um, old. <sighs> Let me give you a little backstory. Here. Okay. When he was taken, um, when he was taken by the Vine, a lot of his other fellow people were taken too, and they went through like a wormhole through space and all this stuff. He escaped and bonded with Shanhara, and Shanhara is something the Vine, which are like a uh, a hive mind creature, they all worship. And they never believed that a human could, like, become one with Shanhara. Mm -hmm. And this is the most, like, catty and talkative Shanhara's ever been in oh, these okay. books, for sure. The most personality from Shanhara, mm -hmm. uh, being kind of like a Jarvis there. Yeah. And uh, when Arik escaped with Shanhara, um, years later, when the Vine came back to get it back, mm. a lot of the people that were taken from ancient Visigoth, you know, times, like... Mm. Uh, we're on that ship. So now he's got all these people from the past that are stuck in the present, mm. just like how kind of like, um, uh, you know, Thor and they have yeah. their town in Iowa. You know, right, so it's right. like they set up camp in mm. Nebraska and he kind of calls it a sovereign nation. Yeah. And he works with the military uh, for unity and things like that. Um, but it, it was very much like him and his people and his mm. wife. And uh, so uh, there was no mention of his wife or anything like that. But I know I think she that's been a while gone now. Mm -hmm. So I would need to finish the last series to understand why he's back on Earth. Gotcha. What happened to bring him mm -hmm. back? All that stuff. This definitely like and, and it could just be because of how I was interpreting the character. But it has this very like fish out of water, mm -hmm. Thor, mm -hmm. Aquaman with like Iron Man tech kind of rolled into one. Um, and then obviously its own unique like backdrop and story yeah. as well. I mean, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. I think uh, the art was really strong. Yeah. Um, I Hopeless is really good at that kind of like fun, quippy writing. Mm -hmm. I think it works better when he's writing like spider characters and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, I, I, I like... I like Hopeless at the most in those kind of team books. It's weird for me to hear that voice with Exo Manowar because Eric is so... He's usually the most like serious oh, of the okay. Valiant Universe. <clears throat> uh between him and uh the Eternal Warrior, they're the two like super serious gotcha. you know, like characters. So it's interesting to have that kind of voice and uh bringing that like more lightheartedness out through Shinhara. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Yeah. I liked it though. Well, 
So how many times has Valiant in the last 10 years rebooted their, their – because didn't they do what big relaunch in 2012 or 2013? Well, okay, so 2012 was the launch of Valiant in general. Gotcha. So gotcha, gotcha. Valiant as a comic book company was bought by Acclaim in the mm-hmm. 90s, and then Acclaim declared bankruptcy, and Valiant mm-hmm. just kind of like disappeared. Gotcha. And they would just like uh, – and then when uh, Dinesh and others bought Valiant and all the character rights, or at least the ones they could, yeah. Acclaim still owned some. Oh. They, they still own like Turok – um, Solar. That's a Valiant character? Originally. Oh. Well, it was like a mix of Valiant and Acclaim. So Turok like, was a video game, wasn't it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, oh, mm-hmm. wow. I didn't know uh, that. They, but there were some Turok companies or uh, games back then, or yeah. comics. Oh. Uh, fun stuff like that. So um, in, when they first kind of brought everything together, they were just kind of reprinting old stuff and then mm. building up for this new launch. And then 2012... Uh. They relaunched everything as a new kind of continuity, new line, mm-hmm. and Exo Man War number one by Robert Venditti at the time was one of the first. And uh, that first like six years or even five years, mm-hmm. uh, it was mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Really good stuff. Yeah. Really, really yeah. strong. Around that time, I had been only I had only been living in LA for a couple years, and like the few people that I had worked with who were really into comic books. They had mentioned that like oh like you should really if you like if you like superheroes and comic books and those types of universes you should check out Valiant and I never did and it kind of just like I kind of forgot about mm-hmm. it and then it was when I met you that you know when we started doing Valiant and all that sort of stuff that I was like oh you know what maybe I should go back and that read first something. like launch in 2012 I, there were only a couple books that weren't like knock out of the park good mm-hmm. uh, and that kind con- that quality kept up for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, and even I would say the, my last like kind of favorite run of books, and it wasn't that they relaunched; they just kind of like renumber one. So gotcha. like when the Matt K- Kent run started at number one, it was still in the same continuity of his of Arik's story. And Valiant, I, d- I and I will admittingly say like I kind of dropped off whenever uh, most of the original team got bought out uh, or like removed forcefully. Right. Um, I I kind of stopped reading out of just like well i have you know whatever there goes all my friends jobs right um i i stopped reading uh i don't know as a company if they're still holding to that really strict continuity Mm -hmm. but one of the things i really loved about valiant comics and what's so great like you can do it now you can just go pick up those 2012 books and just dive the fuck in Mm -hmm. because it's like a modern continuity it's like going to read ultimate there's a modern continuity and the continuity is really tight Mm -hmm. they keep it tight for years and it, I don't know if they're still holding it that tight, but it's tight. It's really good. Uh, Langley M. Neely says, uh, rumor is that they're bringing Turok back soon. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. But I'll agree with Langley, too. Those first five years were like 2012 to 2017. Yeah. Fucking rad, dude. Solid. Solid. Every, they were only putting out two books a month. Mm. And it was just like solid shit. Wow. Yeah, it was really good stuff. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Comics and Coffee here on Hyper RPG live on Twitch and YouTube. If you have been reading books or you picked them up, make sure to tweet at us. We want to see more of your tweets. Yeah. Okay? We want to see more of you talking to us on the social medias about your comic books. Them social meds, baby. Picking them up. Did you go out to the comic book store today? Hopefully not because we're all on lockdown. But if you did and you picked <laughs> them up on the street, tweet at us. Let us know what you got. I already saw Matt tweeting out what he picked up today. Nice. Uh, if you picked them up on Comixology, tweet at us and let, you, let us know what you read, what you liked, so we know what we should be reading, mm-hmm. too. We're all part of the same community. Yeah. So tweet at us, hyper underscore RPG. I love discovering new books through our audience. Yeah, I do, too. Yeah. I really do. Uh, So please do that. Thank you guys so, so much for joining us. Coming up next here on Hyper RPG, for those of you on YouTube that might want to jump over to Twitch to keep this party going, we're going to be playing the Blockbuster board game, which is basically a movie trivia game that Adam's going to kick my ass Ah, at. We'll see. This is the first one that I think you're going to get competitive (laughs) on. (laughs) Just to be real, you've been kind of like, yeah, you know, if I win or whatever, I don't care. I'm predicting (laughs) this is going to be the one where you're like, oh, man. (laughs) So this is going to be the game I suggest we play every fucking day. Yeah, because y- you're going to be into it. So we're going to be doing that uh, downstairs pretty much right in just a minute. We're going to switch over to some clips Don't go nowhere. Uh, to give us just enough time to take a quick bathroom break and uh, get set up downstairs for the board games. Come so with don't us go if you anywhere. want to live. Stay here, and if you're on YouTube, head over to twitch.tv slash hyperrpg. And if you're watching this video later, I know this is kind of evergreen content, please do check us out. We are live during the middle of all this craziness that's going on from 1 p.m. until 10 p.m. Pacific time. 
Monday through Friday just to keep connected to everybody. We're on lockdown here in Los Angeles, so... Um, come you be know, on lockdown with us. Come hang out. We're going to be watching fucking Hot Rod tonight. Woo! Live watch along a Hot Rod. <laughs> Woo, baby. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Gonna How be am fun. I saying what, what way? <laughs> oh, my God. Whiskey. Yep, this is Lucas Eubank's Whiskey. movie. Yeah. Okay. You're going to start getting it. Okay. All these things, you're going to get it. Great, it's great. great. All right, great, all right. Great. Stick around, everybody. We'll be right back. Hey, boys, follow me. And uh, if we make it through hell this week, next week we'll be back streaming starting at 1 a.m. Or 1 p.m. actually. Every single day at 1 p.m. we start off with Hypercast, our crew podcast where we talk about the latest news. And in this case, we'll be obviously talking about COVID-19 every single day and how our industry is surviving or not surviving. Is Spider-Man even close to either of you guys' favorite superhero in Marvel? Bro! Bro! Bro, you wanna fight? Bro!